The Swimmy Head Diane Kimbrell But for the fact that they always know what day it is, Mama and Other Mama are both certifiable. Daddy isn't all there either. I'm the youngest of Mama and Daddy's four children, and my name is Nicolette Bradshaw. Everybody calls me Nikki. Other Mama, my maternal grandmother, has lived with us for as far back as I can remember. She doesn't want to be called Granny or Grandmother because those titles make her feel old, so we call her Other Mama. The year is 1954, and today I'm sitting on the floor of the living room cutting out Marilyn Monroe paper dolls. Some people might think I'm too old for paper dolls. I'm only 10. Mama played with paper dolls till she was 16. She'd probably play with them now if she had time. Mama's in the yard hanging out a wash on the clothesline. Except for an occasional groan from other Mama in the back bedroom, the house is quiet. Other Mama is having one of her spells. This time, it's pains around her heart. Mama says it's probably gas from the white beans she ate last night. I'm worried. Whenever Other Mama takes to bed with one of her spells, I stay home to pray for her and to be around in case something's needed. I'm afraid to leave for fear other mama might die. Just thinking about the possibility of other mama's death leaves me with a weightless, dizzy feeling. The same feeling that comes over me when I lie on my back counting stars on a summer night. Other Mama has a name for a real dizzy feeling. She calls it the swimmy head. One time, the swimmy head came on her and Uncle Harold's funeral, and she fell near an open gravesite. It took three people to get her up. The sound of Other Mama's bare feet smacking the hardwood floor brings my attention back to the dull pair of sewing scissors I'm gliding around Marilyn Monroe's fancy evening gown. I stop cutting to watch Other Mama walk past on her way to the kitchen. The house seems to shake whenever she walks through it. She's wearing only a slip. The straps have fallen over her fleshy shoulders. Other Mama is a good cook. She makes the best biscuits in the world. In fact, her body reminds me of the biscuit man she allows me to make sometimes when she's in a good mood. As she passes by, I notice that the slip is sticking in the crack of her butt, and I feel embarrassed. Her wispy white hair like dandelion fuzz, stands out around her head and her eyes gaze from sunken sockets. I know why other mama's having a dying spell today. I feel like dying too. Lavinia, Lavinia, other mama calls. Although the house is stifling, I feel a chill. Other Mama's sick voice 
is higher and quivers even more than usual. I want to scream at other mama and tell her to stop acting like a scary zombie and to pull the slip out of the crack of her butt, but to show such disrespect for other mama might kill her. I keep my mouth shut and keep cutting. I love other mama, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but I've had nightmares about killing her. One night, I boiled her head in a cauldron, but I'm afraid to even think about those nightmares when she's sick. If other mama were to die, we might starve to death. Mama can't cook. She only goes to the stove to light a cigarette from the gas jet when she can't find a book of matches. Occasionally, Mama will make a pot of fudge. My big brother Jason loves Mama's homemade fudge, but the doctor has warned him not to eat it. Chocolate makes his eyelids swell. I keep hoping the rumor about Jason joining the Air Force isn't true. Maybe it's a joke. He's a great tease. But this isn't funny. If Jason leaves, life will never be the same. None of us will be safe. Just the thought of life without Jason gives me the swimmy head. Who will protect us when Daddy gets mean drunk? Jason's tall and strong. He's taller and stronger than Daddy. Other Mama says Jason could knock Daddy out with a good right hook. But Jason just laughs at her. He'll say, Fats. That's his nickname for other mama. Box and matches are for television. Jason has always brought me presents, like the beautiful Miss Montana doll from Mullins General Store. I didn't much care for the police car with the siren. I really wanted a water gun, but I never let on. I love Jason's surprises. Jason dashes up the front porch steps around five o'clock. Other Mama's so glad to see him, she experiences a miraculous cure. She hops out of bed, throws on a dress, combs her hair, and offers to help him pack. I complain to Mama that there's no time for me to take a bath, and after Jason bathes, there won't be any hot water. You look fine, Mama says. Nobody dresses up to go to the airport. Wash your face and hands and put on a clean pair of shorts, Nikki. Although it makes no sound, I can feel my heart breaking. It's true. Jason is joining the Air Force. I, I feel as if I might explode. There, there must be some way to stop him, to let Jason know how I feel. Some way to ask him not to go. I can't find a clean pair of shorts, so I put on a pale yellow cotton pinafore. It's a hand-me-down from one of my cousins. I stare at my reflection in the mirror. The dress fits fine through the shoulders, but I wish I weren't so skinny. I brush my bangs out of my eyes and tighten the rubber band around my ponytail. I can hear Jason. He does his best singing in the bathtub. He's crooning Tony Bennett's big hit, that love song, Stranger in Paradise. Like Mama, Rosebud, and Aunt Sissy, Jason has perfect pitch. The song is almost over. He'll be out soon. Suddenly, I know what to do, but I must hurry. Jason's black leather wallet, his watch, his high school ring, along with his newest treasure, 
a sterling silver ID bracelet, are lying on the vanity in the back bedroom where he left them. Rosebud presented him with the gold watch and the bracelet for his high school graduation. My hands shake as I open the ID bracelet. It's empty. I remove a sheet of paper and a ballpoint pen from Other Mama's stationery box on the dresser. No one is allowed to touch Other Mama's things. Her possessions are as sacred as the family Bible. But tonight, I don't care if God strikes me dead. Jason must not know or can't remember all the words to the song because he's warbling. Da, da, da. Working fast, I draw a tiny stick figure with a ponytail just like mine. Jason's voice seems so much louder now. He's probably out of the tub and reaching for a towel. Above the stick figure's head, like a cartoon, I draw a balloon. Inside the balloon, I print neatly, Don't go. I love you. I fold the paper into a small square and cram it inside the ID bracelet. I can't let Jason find me here in the bedroom, but there's one last thing that must be done. From an array of cosmetics on the vanity, I grab Rosebud's bottle of bluegrass cologne and spray it all over my head, my neck, and under each armpit like I see Rosebud do every day. Her bluegrass cologne reminds me of rich people living in faraway places who own stables full of horses and eat steak every night for dinner. As I tiptoe quickly from the bedroom and past the bathroom door, I can hear Jason singing softly. da da da, da stranger in paradise. Ba da 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 ba da